How was your weekend, Fallon? Lonely. Why? Well, I made plans with a dear friend and they forgot and flew to a different city. How was yours? You flew to a different I city. I flew to a different city. <laughs> Is that a real tear? <laughs> I said if I was going to do TV, I was never not going to be myself. We're all the people who are a little bit different. You're sitting next to one on the couch. So let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Now, here's Jason. Welcome to Monday. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Jason Show. I'm Jace. Let us start with this. A little bit of lunchtime drama. A little bit of lunchtime drama. A mom, thank you, audience, for ooing without being cued to. Aaron's not here today, so you're going to have to ooh all by yourself. That's right, yeah. There we go. I know. Well, a mom left a cute note, really cute note, in her son's lunchbox. But that did not go over well with this elementary school girlfriend. Look at this. Did you eat all your lunch? That's no, cool. actually, because my girlfriend was in a lot of calls for me, and you put a note that says, I love you, babe. Because I put a note in your lunchbox that said, I love you, babe? Yes. Your girlfriend got mad? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Yeah, Mom. <laughs> For the record, my mom did the same thing to me. That's right, yes. I love you, babe. Let's get started. Roll the music, Leo. Here we go. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, filling in for Kendall today. Give it up for Fallon, everybody. How you doing? Good, how are you? I'm well. Great. I see in the cold open there you had a really good weekend. I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, again, if you missed last week's show, I owned this. <laughs> Fallon and I had plans. I forgot about, about said plans. Mm -hmm. And I flew to L.A. Yeah. And I'm sorry, yeah. I mean, thank God I brought it up on Friday when I saw him or I would have been like, where are you? I'm in the rotunda at Mall of America. Yeah. What time you think you'll be here? And I would have said, I'm in San Diego. <laughs> uh, that's right, yeah. <laughs> I'm in San Diego now on Saturday. But yeah, yeah. fun. I did. I'll explain a little bit. Um, I'll talk about it a little bit uh, in a little bit. But I will just give you, this is a public service announcement. And you know I always have, when I go on these adventures, something always happens. And this is just, I'm doing this for humanity, okay? Okay. I'm doing this for humanity because I think everyone will agree with me. Mm -hmm. I boarded the plane on Friday afternoon and I sit down and I have a window seat and a woman sat next to me in the middle seat. And usually if you're in the middle seat, I have a, a, an abundance of patience because it's the worst seat on the airplane. Yeah. But let me just tell you, this woman doused herself in every scent in Sephora before she <laughs> sat down. And then, mm. and this is no joke, about every 30 minutes, she dug into the seat back pocket where she kept a giant bottle of scented lotion. Oh. And she kept and she kept reapplying about every half hour. <laughs> to which my first thought was, how dry is your skin? <laughs> And my second thought is, I wanted to jump out of the plane. Yeah, because, obviously. Because my throat, no joke, was getting coated with the smell <laughs> oh. of her scents. Mm. So let me just speak for all of humanity. Mm -hmm. Before you get into an airplane, which is basically a giant Coke can uh, <laughs> with no ventilation, Please don't douse yourself in perfume or cologne. Nobody wants to smell that at 37,000 feet for three hours. Thank you. Yeah. God bless America. <laughs> there you go, yeah. Right? That's so bad. 
I feel like I have a heightened sense of smell, so that would have like really irritated me a lot. But there are certain people that use a lot of um, colognes or perfumes. You can like tell where they've been. Like you'll enter a bathroom, you're like, oh, Sandy was in here. <laughs> like yes. I can tell from her scent. Like, yeah. and also those like usually the lotions that have the scent in them, they're not very moisturizing because of the scent there usually have like alcohol in them so that's why she kept breathing she's drying herself out we, <laughs> we parked in LA and you know when you usually hear all the clicks from the seatbelt everyone's taking off their seatbelt she didn't take off her seatbelt she used that opportunity to reapply again <laughs> and I thought my goodness, get yourself to a dermatologist. Yeah, fair, fair. You are really, you are like mm -hmm. a guana dry. You know <laughs> what I mean? If you are, re it smelled like a mix of lavender, mm. patchouli oil, oh. and cucumber. Oh. It was wow. awful. So I, botanical. Very, yeah. <laughs> Love that for it her. was disgusting. <laughs> Let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. It's this. <laughs> It's one of the most popular dating shows, period. Love is Blind is currently airing its sixth season on Netflix. But fans are already anticipating a new season that will hit close to home for many of us here on the show. Love is Blind is reportedly filming in Minneapolis, specifically my neighborhood of the North Loop. This is all the buzz on social right now. Uh, it's all over TikTok. Filming locations uh, could include spots like the Hewing Hotel, which I can see the Hewing from my front lawn, from my balcony. Uh, hi, hi in Northeast, Nolos, Cuzzies, and the Four Seasons. <laughs> Last year, a production company put out the call seeking singles from Minneapolis and St. Paul. Oh, yes. Now, you're plugged in because Fallon, again, uh, to quote my friend Lori Fisher, hosts a very popular radio <laughs> program. Uh, yeah. Fallon's here today. She hosts a very, very famous uh, radio program. But <laughs> according, you, you hear a lot about stuff like this. I'm very into Love is Blind. This season has been crazy. I, Jake and I, my husband, we love a conflict. So we're constantly looking for it in our shows. And we love Love is Blind. So we actually know some body possibly on the show but they're not allowed to talk about it but also my insiders dm me they're like just saw love is blind and there's a very big giveaway other than a film crew yeah. <laughs> they always use gold cups so like they won't use restaurant cups and they explain the reason for that is continuity because they do so much editing so that the drinks aren't like different levels but oh. they use everyone's always like why are they using these gold cups but they're all over the twin cities and the interesting thing about this season is i don't think it comes out till next year so I was like wait if these couples get married or engaged do they have to like keep it a secret until next year probably so yeah it's interesting but it's really cool they're doing it here because yeah they pick a city every season so that every couple is from the same city so that they could actually work out and they usually stay in one apartment complex yep I bet that apartment is in the North Loop. Probably, yeah. I'm gonna that keep makes an sense. eye out. I'm gonna go around my neighborhood today, and I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna look out for really attractive singles. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right into the show. No, yeah. I'm not. I really am not. But yeah. Uh, it appeared to be Jason Matheson peeking into windows throughout the Twin <laughs> Cities. <laughs> News I'm headline. I'm okay with that. I'm okay, fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Says yeah, he a, was doing yeah, research. I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Next in the dish, four words I thought I would never say. Bowen Yang is straight. What? That's the premise <laughs> from an SNL sketch, probably one of the better ones from this week's episode with host Sydney Sweeney, who admits she has a crush on the really very gay Bowen. Look. <laughs> so anyway, the idea is Sydney Sweeney Todd. Attend the tale of Sydney Sweeney Todd. Hey, Silo, hey. Oh my god. <laughs> Mikey, that sounds awesome. It'll be funny when we do it. Hey, baby girl, where's my smile? Oh, I didn't know you were straight. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm full hetero. <laughs> That's better. So, what's your type? Oh, you know. Blonde. Smart. Heavy naturals. Yeah. What's yours? Gay presenting Asian podcasters. I know a few of those. Hey, Sydney, are you coming to set? Um, yeah, I'll be right there. You get tired of laughing with the little boys? <laughs> Let me know. Yeah. <laughs> and there they are. There, yeah. 
Well, <laughs> Bowen has to keep his straight identity on the down low, and in the end, he eventually blows her off. There we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Again, I think Jeff put that in the show because he loves, or uh, Bjorn put it in, he loves when uh, I accidentally, you were filling in when I was at Disney World, and for whatever reason, mm -hmm. I'm walking past a group of women, and I did this. Leo, take five. What up, ladies? <laughs> and I don't know. <laughs> And I don't know why I did that. I don't. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. You messaged me and you're like, I think I just hit on a group of women. I did. Yeah. Oh, that's like, right. Yeah. I did. I did text you. Like, good for you. And Fallon right. goes, Are you drunk? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We have a lot more to come. We'll be right back. Back after this. <laughs> I stand corrected. Our audience today is being led by senior executive producer Lori Lees Fisher over there. That's right. We don't have Aaron today. She's doing a great job. Yeah. She is. Welcome back. So here's the deal in Florida. Uh, hi, Orlando. You guys have been having cold temperatures, and it's causing a really odd phenomenon. Falling iguanas. Oh. Like falling from trees. No. Falling from roofs, that's right. Well, John Oliver poked fun, yes, once again at newscasters, reporting on iguana advisories. Here's our Late Night Rewind. And now, newscasters react to a seasonal phenomenon. And while many of us have been dealing with falling snow this week, Floridians are watching for falling iguanas. So they're cold-blooded creatures, which means that they take on the temperature of the outside. And once it hits 50 degrees, remember, they want the warm stuff. They start to slow down. At 45, they're out. Yeah. Right now, we are under an iguana advisory. That means that temperatures are going to drop below between 38 and 45 degrees. Here we have the iguana cast, here, especially for you, Chris. Um, becoming sluggish. No, the iguana are not dead. It takes a long time and really, really cold air for that to happen. So if you do see an iguana on the ground, do not pick it up. Don't take it home with you. You think they're not well. You pick them up. You put them in your car. You bring them to your home no. to warm no. them up and make sure they're okay. They wake up now when they thaw up and they're angry. I imagine it's like a bear coming out of hibernation, but, but they've got the claws. They've got the teeth. They're like, all right, listen, I fell asleep in a tree. I woke up in your foyer. What is going on around yeah. here? Yeah. You're going to freak out. And they fall out of the trees and then you're mm -hmm. supposed to kill them because they're an invasive species. It's oh, crazy to. What? Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, you're you're encouraged to oh to kill them when they're uh, crazy stunned. place. What? What? Are they okay? Y yeah, I mean, they come back to life. But that guy said kill them. Well, well, no, I don't know. I think that guy was kidding. What? I don't know. I don't. I don't think you're supposed to kill them. I don't think you should joke about that on the news. I, I think know. people will take it seriously. I know. When I was in uh, over the, I told you guys I was in Belize uh, for a cruise, and we were on uh, perhaps the worst tour I've ever been on in my life. <laughs> um, and I mean ever. Um, it was a six-hour tour to the Mayan ruins, mm. and. Um, I was stuck on a bus for two hours getting to those ruins, and the tour guide thought he was funny about everything, and he gets on his little megaphone, and he's like, yeah, I'm, at the end of this uh, excursion, we're gonna feed you lunch. And he goes, we're having chicken. But if the chicken doesn't have wings, it's probably iguana. And I went, and at that, oh, the audience is stunned with that. They don't even know what to say, yeah. So we get to lunch. We get to lunch, and let me just tell you, this, uh, two favorite things about this lunch. There are three women with three of those uh, disposable aluminum trays, you know, that you bring to your family gatherings. Mm -hmm. And there's the, the thing of chicken. All I'm doing is looking for wings because I'm like, <laughs> I would normally go for the breast, but I don't want the breast of like the iguana. You know what I mean? So I carefully took the, the wings and Colin goes, are we going to eat that? And I go, yeah, girl, I'm hungry. And then Colin... Colin, we joke that he gets hangry. They served beans and rice with this meal. And, and Colin goes, oh, I'll take some beans. And they took out a melon baller scooper and put like that much <laughs> beans on his plate. And Colin goes, 
can I have double beans? And I look at him and I go, this ain't Chipotle. You can't, like, you know, asking for double beans and rice from this poor woman who's serving a guana, you know. I, you know but, yeah. Never do that to her, I'm telling you. Oh anyway, my gosh, yeah. yeah. The end. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Can I have double beans? I would do the same thing. Yeah. I, sa I recently saved a woman from going on that tour. She had no idea. She had no idea that you take an hour and a half bus ride to get to the ruins. And you're on, a, a, you're on this bus with very little air conditioning and a teenager telling you what animals you were going to see. And uh, she's holding up these little, uh, she's like, uh, you may see a monkey. And my, and, and my husband trying to pull me off the ledge because he knows I love monkeys. He treats, he treats me like a child because I am a child. And he goes like this. He goes, honey, did you hear her? You might see a monkey. <laughs> oh, I was okay. in the worst mood ever. <laughs> ever. I wanted to jump out of that bus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was horrible. Yeah, yeah. I am a joy to live with. <laughs> yeah, let's get going. It might be a monkey. Yeah. He does, because you do. You have to handle me like a child. Honey, she said monkey. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> let's move on. More just for you now. All it takes for Rihanna, for Rihanna to get back on stage. A really, really big paycheck. <laughs> Aside from the Super Bowl halftime show, uh, we haven't seen Rihanna perform a full live concert in about eight years. But that changed thanks to a big wedding in India. Look at this. <laughs> so there's Rihanna. No, no, no. No, no, audience, save your energy. Uh, let's, let's clap at something else. Rihanna was seen kicking off a three-day, three-day pre-wedding bash for quite literally the richest man in India. He invited about 1,200 guests, including Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, uh, other rich people. The extravaganza also included a performance by magician David Blaine. And according to TMZ, Rihanna made $6 million. Wow. For that. The a and this is what kills me. The actual wedding isn't until July. Okay. This isn't like a pre-wedding on the same weekend. Like for me, I took my, when we got everyone in for the weekend, yeah. on Friday, I took them to Chili's. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was my. Yeah. yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Also, like, the dad. And I had a magician come to Chili's. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A really nice gift from her dad. I guess it was a, was it a girl or a guy getting married? I don't know. Do but we, either way, a guy. guy yeah, okay. Yeah. I was like, I was gonna say similar. My dad smoked in the hotel room, um, and so I had to pay for a fee for that. So very similar gift. He was like, "What? You can't smoke in the hotel rooms? What year is this?" And I'm like, "Actually, yeah, it's the future, so you can't." Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll see your smoking. Go on. And, and mom, mm -hmm. mom is my mom is laughing right now. I will see your dad smoking in the hotel room, and I will raise you at my wedding weekend. Weekend, we got a phone call that one of my relatives lost his teeth uh, okay. somewhere, somewhere, okay. <laughs> somewhere in a restaurant. Restaurant, yep. somewhere in a hotel. I won't say what restaurant, but it, it included a relative making the following phone call. Hi, we were <laughs> dining there last night. Do you see any fresh <laughs> teeth anywhere? I do have one final one. Okay. My mother hit on the hot dog cart attendant. We had a late night snack of a hot dog cart. He was dressed as a hot dog. She went up to him and I won't say what she said to him, but my friend who had just had a baby witnessed my mom hit on the hot dog cart guy and laughed so hard she peed on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Leo, take five. <laughs> there we go. There's Fallon. Any, anytime you have a relative peeing on the floor, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Next in the dish, uh, a real diva move by DJ Khaled. He went, this, I saw this on the plane, and anyway, he went to extreme measures. 
to keep his shoes spotless <laughs> before before a concert in Miami. <laughs> Look at this. Can I, can I get everybody to help me? Please, everybody help me. Get on the side. Get on the side. Oh, oh, thank you, brother. I appreciate it. You want to get in the back? Can't mess <laughs> Yep, yep. DJ Khaled <laughs> shared this video on Instagram. He calls over security guards to scoop him up, to put him on, uh, from his car to the back of that truck before he took stage. He didn't want his uh, Jordans, his expensive Jordans, getting dirty. Okay. People think this is a joke. <laughs> now, you, we argued, jokingly argued about this in our meeting. Jeff and I are outraged by this. You think it's hysterical. <laughs> I do yeah. think it's so ridiculous. It's so him. He's ridiculous. I am not like a DJ Khaled fan necessarily. I mean, he's had some bangers, but it just makes me laugh. It just makes me, because it is so ridiculous. Like, those guys are like, man, I'm supposed to protect you. Now I have to, like, carry you. Yeah. Like, I didn't sign up for this. We did offer Fallon for her last day filling in to carry her walking out. Yeah. yeah there we go. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. You already have, like, a pinched nerve, so yeah, I'm not going to do that to you. I just, come on. <laughs> I it's can't so excuse. Ridiculous. It's, I can't. Those security guards. And that's not like why they're there. Three steps. It wasn't like it was like through a muddy terrain. It was <laughs> cement. <laughs> How dirty are his shoes going to get? I don't know. Next up, the wait is almost over for the return of Hacks uh, with Gene Smart. We love that show. I hope you watch it. It's over there on the HBO. And we're getting a first uh, look at the third season. Here's a little teaser. Sorry, can you hold the door? Sorry, thank you. Whoa. of your more problematic material. It's gaining traction. Okay, which minority group is upset? I don't think minority is the proper term anymore. What are they called? No, don't say they. Oh, I thought everybody was they now. It's a different thing. <laughs> so good. I love her. The new, the new season picks up a year after Deborah Vance and her writer uh, parted ways. Guest stars this year, Helen Hunt. Christopher Lloyd and Tony Goldwyn. You can start watching new episodes on Max May 2nd. You don't, have you watched this yet? Oh, yes. I've, oh, I've, that's right. Since, okay. like, the beginning, I love the show. She was actually in town. The, I don't know her real name. The, Hannah. Hannah, the younger one. She was in town, like, sometime this, or, like, late last year when Jake and I went and saw her new comedy. Very good. And yeah. she is, for us my age, she is the daughter of Lorraine Newman, yep. one of the original cast members of SNL. I didn't know that. Yeah, That's there we go. Cool. Okay. I learned that your relative peed on the floor, and you learned that. Yes. There we go. Thank yeah, you. There we go. The more you know. The more you know. Yeah. Shooting star. Yes. We're going to take a break. Stephanie Hansen and uh, one heck of a trip to Los Angeles when we come back. Back in a moment. Coming up, she's famous for her Hanson hacks, and she has another one for you today. Our foodie queen, Stephanie Hanson, is here with cinnamon roll hacks, so get those notes ready. And then, pop culture nirvana. I was smack dab in the middle of stars from the 70s, 80s, 90s in beautiful downtown Burbank this weekend. I'll tell you why it was a dream come true when we come back. It is the ultimate breakfast treat, or really, I, we can eat it anytime. Uh, right there, you can see it behind me. Who doesn't love biting into a warm, ooey, gooey, fresh cinnamon roll with frosting dripping down on the side? I'm very hungry now. Thank you. I'll, I'll give it to you in a break, audience. I uh, here to show us a great Hanson hack on how to make them at home is our foodie queen, the host of Taste Buds on Fox Local, Stephanie Hanson. I love it. I have watched you do a lot of these things. I've, I've listened to a lot of Hanson Hacks. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that you were a cinnamon roll girl. 
You know what? My niece, Skylar. Hi, Skylar. Is huge into cinnamon rolls. And so we have them at every family holiday, every weekend that we do, because it's her favorite thing. Okay. So for me personally, like, okay. But she loves them. So. so you do it for Skylar. Yeah, and actually I posted something on my Stephanie's Dish Instagram, and she already has responded, I need those. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yes, I know you do, Skylar. And this was really popular on your socials. This went viral. So yeah, what, so are we, what are we doing? Here's what happened. So uh, here's what, what do you say? What happened What, what is. happened was, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was uh, scrolling on TikTok like one does, and I saw these cinnamon rolls, and they were these cinnamon grands, which I was like, okay, fine, a can of rolls. But then they did something magical to them. So we'll do it, and then I'll tell you the result, okay? Okay. So you have to open this, because I know this is your favorite thing. <laughs> this scares the crap out I of don't. me. He doesn't like to open the can. No, I don't. That's he, why I make my own biscuits. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He's got um, can popping. Look at his I face. I don't like that at all. That okay, let's go. Let's go. You do it. Come on. You you can do it. I got faith. No, you got to whack. Oh, whack it? Whack it on the corner. There, there see. We go. Oh, it didn't pop. It usually pops. It does pop. Okay. Okay, so basically what we're doing is we're taking these packaged rolls, right? And we're just putting them in our... Does it hurt you to use prepackaged stuff? Absolutely. It's hurting your Do you soul, know isn't it? it? Yeah. Can you I can see tell it? by the, your voice. Can you voice. see me shriveling? Yeah. You are, yeah. You really want to make these all by yourself, but I yeah. I totally do. Okay. And these would but be people more do this. This is what America does. I know. You got to come down to us commoners. It's we are magical like you. No, yes. I know. That's why I'm doing this. Okay. Okay. These have been out for way too long. So let's just assume. Um. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do something with this one in a minute. But let's just like assume is that this we're in Master here, Chef okay? Junior? What is this? Like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they've been out of my house for a while. Okay, another thing that happened is the butter coagulated. Oh, so let's. Is I, this your first time on no, TV? No, but I didn't realize that it was gonna get solidified so fast. So basically, ignore everything we're doing. No. So you put no. your rolls in your pan. Now okay. imagine that this is not coagulated butter. Okay. It's melted butter. Okay. And then you're going to put in your brown sugar, about a quarter cup. Okay. Then you're going to add in a little bit of vanilla, and you're going to make this kind of a slurry, all right? Okay. So then what you're going to do with your whole can is you're going to put about two-thirds cups of cream right over it. Over it? Over it, and around it and in it. What, what, uh, why? Because <laughs> it is going to absorb in the rolls and they're going to be puffy and lighter and fluffy and tastier. Is it pop? Okay, but let me ask. We're going to taste it. Because them, Fallon so tried a version of this. Yep. And it was, and I don't mean to talk about people when they're not here, but it was an utter disaster. And uh, it didn't. I hear you. She's here! <laughs> It was, it was an unmitigated disaster for her. No, it's not going to be a disaster. Because it was too soupy for her. Okay, I get that. Okay. So I'm just ignoring you until we get to the Go end. Go ahead. Everybody does. See. So this is melted butter, right? So, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. you pour all that on there. Okay. Then you're going to, like, bake this whole thing, and you're going to bake it at 350 for 30 minutes. Yes, ma'am. Now, what happens when you do this is you've got a little puffier, a little fluffier, a little more delicious Pillsbury Grand situation. So you can then amp them up a little bit. Okay. So you could put cardamom, you could put nuts. You could put like um, a rehydrated raspberry and make like a raspberry frosting. Or like there's a lot of things you could do with this just plain situation for like an Easter brunch. So this just ele this is elevating yes. the store bought thing. Correct. And I put cardamom in there and cinnamon, and you can frost them too. Like right, I don't want to frost them right yet. I just want you to try one little. Edge because here. these are now forget what we did. These are actually the one you've made yeah. it. This is with the hands I and I made hat. them this morning. Okay, may I? Yeah. Sorry. These look a lot better than Fallon's. <laughs> Can she hear me? Oh, she's back there, yeah. 
Now, there was a little ooey gooey, but consider that these have been out of the oven for two hours. There is a mark, because we have these a lot in the summer, there is a difference. That's really a good. A real difference. There's a real, there is a taste difference. And they're better. They're way better. Way they're better. They're way better. And That's really good. Pretty excited about these because I was like wow well if that works and like notice we didn't even put on the cream cheese icing yet right yeah and they were pretty good even without it that would be and then do you make your own cream cheese frosting well icing? I, I thought about it yeah but I was like I don't know because I don't even know if I would ice them because I think for me icing okay, like put yeah. them over the edge no 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 go ahead and ice it yeah yeah you'd, you'd ice? remember hashtag former fat kid go ahead and do that yeah yeah no I'm good I'm good okay we're not done with Steph no no there is another we're gonna elevate if this is floor four in the building we're gonna take this to floor 12 when we come back back in a moment everybody stay with us those are really good. And we're back with the cinnamon roll queen herself, Stephanie Anson. Now, we should say, the if we went so fast, the thing that really elevated it, quite simply, the butter and adding the heavy whipping cream, The half right? stick of butter, the two-thirds cups of cream gave it just a richness and helped the buns get a little bit puffier and taller. And I also think I put cardamom and cinnamon too and a little vanilla. So all of that really made it taste like a more fresh homemade roll. Yeah. They're really good, guys. Trust me. I know you can't. It's, they're, they're, you did it again. Now, okay. I went to the next level with these okay. because Rhodes cinnamon rolls are also pre-made. This is what they look like. I've never had those. Oh, they're good. Okay. And you put them in the refrigerator overnight, and then you do the same thing. You take the half a stick of butter, you take the cream, and what I did with these is I added a little orange juice to the cream mixture, and then I grated fresh orange over the top with my microplane just to give this kind of a little orange flavor. Okay. Because an orange roll is always delicious, right? So let's I try guess, this one. yeah, I sure. I trust you. Because I think you could, again, you could do this with oranges. Ooh, see, it's got kind Ooh. of that delicious Oh, look at there. that. Oh, these look, oh, oh, wow. And it, I had about two tablespoons of orange juice and then the orange on the top. Mmm. <laughs> wow. Yeah. There is nothing about that that tastes like I didn't make it homemade. There isn't anything about oh, that yummy. that I don't like. That is real good stuff. It is really good. And you guys, this was so easy. I did have to set the rolls in the refrigerator overnight to loosen up a little bit, but same treatment. Just a little orange juice in the two-thirds cup cream, half cup butter, a little vanilla. That's all I did, and these are super delicious, and dare I say, better than I, that. I was, I was just going to say, and yeah. I love cinnamon and caramel and whatever. I like those better than that. Yeah, their texture's a little firmer. Oh my goodness, um, those are good. The roll is a little higher quality because it's a yeasted roll, so you get that kind of yeasty taste. Yeah, yeah, I, it's that orange thing. That did it, that's ah. real good stuff. Oh, I love it. Oh yeah. Okay, we got one more thing over here. Okay. Now this is just a cute little one for the kids, right? So we- We love the kids. Made these into bunny ears. I made an audience, I did, yeah, I mean, you know, oh, look at little bunnies. Just, if you have the littles coming over, you just kind of put a little icing on them, and then you sprinkle it with a little bit. This is like an Easter idea. Just a little bit of these jimmies and make them real cute. They're this called jimmies? Yeah, that's I what didn't the know little that. sprinkles I are called. I just call them sprinkles. Yeah, sprinkled jimmies. Oh. Okay, so how you do this, though, is you sort of... Now, again, this roll has been sitting out for a little longer than it should, but you sort of unroll the roll and make the bunny ears... <laughs> and there's a trick for it. <laughs> you have to like press it together, right? Okay, okay this looks like bad Play-Doh, but this see is, that? Yeah, I see, yeah. Okay, now halfway through the baking, you put bake them at 350 for 20 minutes, but halfway through, you pull them out and you kind of have to press them in because they start to puff up and come apart. So you press them in to make sure that they retain their shape. But I mean, seriously, if you have grandkids or little ones, how cute is that? That is really cute. Yeah. Even adults. Yes, even adults. What are you yes. doing with Are you going to eat that? No, oh. I'm not, because it's oh. just raw dough. But yeah. 
I'm, I'm just saying you could also do these with this type of the little bit more delicious roll, if I can call it that. Just again, by unrolling it and just making the little ears. And have the, get the kids involved, free labor. Have yeah. them do the bunnies. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? They're there, they're not doing anything. So here's kind of that other roll type in my hand, but so oh, that's you see, cute. yeah, it's not hard to do. No, 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 no. I like okay. this. Are, uh, are you leaving this for the crew or are you taking this with you? No, I'm gonna leave it. Oh, yes. I'm leave it for the yeah. crew today. Yeah. Okay, uh, but try the orange. Again, very easy, just two tablespoons of orange juice added, and then I zested with my microplane to give it that fresh little orange zhuzh. Mm -hmm. Very delicious. The so. queen of the zhuzh, give it up for Stephanie Hansen, everybody. You can watch Taste Buds on Fox Local. Right there on Fire TV, Apple TV, Android, Roku. When we come back, uh, a one-of-a-kind trip to Los Angeles. So when we come back, back in a moment, everybody. real good. Welcome back. Well, I got the chance to spend uh, the weekend in Los Angeles and San Diego. And while I was in, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about San Diego later, but while I was in LA, I got to visit the Hollywood show. The Hollywood show is a big convention uh, where you can meet stars. Uh, they have them several times a year. Now, before I read anything else, I just want to say, um, go ahead and laugh at me throughout this segment uh, because I have a weird thing that I love and I've always loved. And if you watch the show, you know what I love. But I want you, I really want this to be um, substitute the show Dallas for whatever brings you joy and you'll know why this was such a good weekend. It may not be a television show, it may be a movie that you love, but this is just, for me, a, a, a source of pure joy in my life. The main reason I went is because it featured the largest cast reunion ever of my favorite TV show, Dallas, since the show went off the air. Yeah, right there. Thanks to the Hollywood show. Since the show went off the air in 1991 and then the reboot in 2014. Now, let me start a little bit at the beginning. I memorably, the first cast member I ever met was back in 2003 uh, when I met Linda Gray. Uh, now, this is the current photo right there. This was uh, on Saturday at, in beautiful downtown Burbank. This was a reunion because, like I said, I met her here in Minneapolis when Linda uh, starred in The Graduate on stage. And I had a chance to interview her. Here's a little bit of that. Um, I got a chance to interview her. We hit it off. She invited me backstage. We ended up having lunch together at Dayton's oh. across the street. I helped her across the street and uh, because it was snowy. And then about seven years later, we met again in Dallas when I went for the uh, junket for the TNT reboot of the show. Well, when I brought this up to Linda, um, I said, I hate when people do this to me, but I'm going to do it to you. And I said, I met you once, twice, three times. And I showed that video and she said, Minneapolis. She goes, we had lunch together uh, at a department store. And I go, we sure did. Aww. And yeah. That's nice. That's nice. And it meant the world to me. Like it meant, it still means the world to me. She's a doll and just fabulous. Next, I met Bobby Ewing, Patrick Duffy himself. Uh, there we are uh, on Saturday. Now, I will be very honest with you. I have met Patrick a few times and Bo uh, Patrick is not always very effusive. Patrick's a little more quiet. Uh, I will, this time, he could not have been more kind and nice and uh, lovely. It was great meeting Bobby. Uh, uh, doesn't he look good, everybody? Yeah. He looks really good, yeah. Now, let me tell you, this last one is this, this reunion, this show had not only main cast members, but it had B and C list players from the show, people that were maybe only on it for one year. Christopher Atkins was there from the Blue Lagoon. He was in Dallas for one season. But I think my best reaction or my best interaction was with a B player from Dallas. It was the woman who played JR's dedicated secretary, Sly. That was her name on the show, um, Deborah. Deborah was on the show through most of the run. So 
Yeah, she wasn't a main cast member, but anybody that watched Dallas, you're nodding your head. You know who Sly is. When I walked into this convention, I literally bumped into her. Uh, she was the first person I saw, and I went like this. I go, oh, hi, Sly. And she goes, well, hello, Red Sweater. And I go, hi. And, and then we bumped into each other a second time. So then I went to her table, and this is where, can I tell you, uh, this is being great to fans. This, this interaction, this is wonderful. I went up to her table, and, I, and she goes, hello again. I go, hello. And uh, she goes, well, what, what would you like? Because you can, at these things, you can get just an 8x10 signed, or you can get a selfie and an 8x10 for a certain price. I said, well, I would like the, uh, an 8x10 signed, please. And I handed over my money, and she goes, well, which picture would you like? So I picked, and there's a story, that I picked this picture, and she goes, oh, my goodness, you picked uh, a picture from my favorite uh, from my favorite season, and I go, it's my favorite season too. <laughs> and I said, it's the eighty. I go, it's the 1983-84 season. <laughs> and she goes, wow, you do know these things. And I said, yeah. <laughs> so, so she goes, and it was so funny. She looked at me like this. She goes, what would you like me to sign? How would you, what do you want me to put on this? And I went, huh? And she goes. Can you quote me any of the dialogue from this scene? And I went, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, uh, uh, come on, you're, now that's. It. So I started quoting dialogue, and she goes, what was the name of the episode? And I went, please, to catch a Sly. Because in this scene, Leo, you can see that JR is showing Sly a, uh, a photograph. JR caught Sly double crossing him. Uh oh. Uh, and obviously she doesn't look happy. And I go, Yeah, the episode was called To Catch a Sly. So Deborah goes, That's what I'm going to write on your photo. So she wrote <laughs> that. Yeah. But like I said, and I'll post, I have all these photos. I'll be posting them on my social media. Just search for Jason Matheson and we'll do them on The Jason Show. But my point is, no matter what, Colleen Lindstrom was here a few weeks ago talking about this. I know you can roll your eyes at these stories, and you may not even know what Dallas is, or you may never have watched it. But I learned so many lessons this weekend in just two days, and one of them reinforced. I don't care if people judge me. I don't care if you think it's ridiculous. It, that show saved me when I was being bullied. It was something to look forward to. It was a connection between me and my grandma. Uh, and now as an adult, it... it takes me back to a really great place in my life. So for all of those reasons, thank you, Dallas. Thank you, Hollywood Show. And a little bit later this week, another great interaction that I had, including I'll show you video from 1989 of a really geeky teenage Jason. Uh, so you'll see that on Wednesday. We'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. They get a birthday pin, a sash, and up to $20 of free play at Grand Casino. You can sign up when you get your tickets uh, at eventbrite.com. You sign up just like you normally would, but there's a space for you to include that it's your birthday. You can come a few days before and a few days after, and we would love to celebrate with you. So thank you in advance. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. We were just talking to the audience, and this is your your last day filling in until we invite you back. You know, whenever. If. No, you if will. you invite me back. No, if oh, you invite yeah. me back. If. No, you can come back. Now, see, now you have everyone feeling sorry for you. That's you know, my that's plan what, yeah. every day. Yeah. No, but talking of nighttime soaps, I knew this, but you were just saying you were named after a nighttime soap character. Yes, my parents named me after Dynasty. Yep. Uh, Blake's daughter Fallon. I didn't don't know I don't know her well. Um, well. Would you like me to describe her? No, I know. My mom told me, but like, great, I'm glad you chose her as yeah. the name, but okay. Let's see, what were some of Fallon's traits? Uh, <laughs> troublemaker. Uh, uh, there's another one that I won't say. Can't say but that yeah. on TV? Yeah. yeah, fair, um, yeah. She, was, she got lovely. Oh. She started off real bad. Okay. And then, then people grew to love her. Oh. Some could say I have the same story arc, I guess, maybe. Tomorrow.
Palm Spring Baker returns. He's sharing a recipe for an upside down pineapple upside down cake. But right now, that's going to do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> she was thick.